from the back of the back lot of a movie studio in Hollywood. It's the Tom Likas Show. Hello. And now, and now, here he is, Tom Likas. Thank you for tuning in to the Tom Likas Show. This is where America gets together to talk about the issues you really care about. It's a different kind of radio talk program. We're the radio talk show that is not hosted by a right-wing wacko or a convicted felon. No, I am your host. Write down our telephone number. You're going to need it. It's 1-800-5-800-TOM. 1-800-5-800-866. Thank you for tuning in. Thanks for being part of our program. And we are together again on the radio. Stupid idea. This is stupid. I'll tell you why it's stupid. I can't believe we have a lot of listeners who think this is a good idea. Maybe you haven't heard about it yet. But it is indeed stupid. Says here that this is according to a website. By the way, this story's appeared elsewhere. We have it from the website of the NBC affiliate in San Francisco. California Assemblyman Jim Beal Jr., Democrat of San Jose, has said that he has proposed legislation that would increase the excise tax on beer sold in California uh, in such a way that it could generate $2 billion in the state. Bill said the fallout from alcohol consumption costs California's nearly $36 billion a year in increased health costs, crime, lost productivity, and injuries from accidents and abuse. He said it's time for the beer industry to help us with the staggering burden it has helped to create. Hey, let's review that list he gave, okay? $36 billion a year in increased health costs. Well, guess what? That's between the beer drinker and his insurance company. It has nothing to do with the state of California. And if the insurance company is losing money, uh, replacing the livers of people who drink too much, I don't see why that's California's problem. You know, that maybe you can't get health insurance after that. Maybe you have health insurance and your premiums go up. Um, most jobs, you have health insurance until you've spent through a million dollars in coverage or something like that. But the state of California isn't paying those health costs. Insurance companies are. I mean, please. Crime. They claim crime. Well, you know what? Uh, Beer is not the only alcohol. Uh, There are spirits. There's wine. Uh, There's other uh, products such as wine coolers or malt beverages. You know, why would you tax beer and not hard lemonade? Stupid. Uh, Lost productivity. Again, lost productivity is the problem of the employer. If the employer is hiring heavy drinkers and the person is uh, calling in sick all the time, coming in late, leaving early, That's between the employee and the employer. Why should California get money? Because companies have lost productivity. And the companies that have lost productivity, whose fault is that, that they hired the wrong person for the job? If you're hiring drunks at your company, why should California get a bonus? Then they say, and injuries from accidents. Well, (laughs) you just said increased health costs. What are you talking about here? Injuries from accidents? And abuse, again, that's between you and your insurance company. Stupid. Says here, according to a statement from Beale's office, the money can be used for, quote, health and law enforcement services that must cope with the havoc, such as traffic accidents and fatalities, domestic violence and illnesses. That is fueled by the alcohol industry. Well, again, 
We're not talking about taxing the alcohol industry. We're talking about picking on beer. And I might add, there are many breweries that are housed here in California. What's going to happen to some of the smaller breweries when you institute that kind of tax on top of, of what people have to pay for a six-pack of microbrew made here in California? You probably put a lot of these companies out of business. On top of that, again, um, aren't we already paying for those law enforcement services? When you get arrested for a DUI, what about all those fees you pay? Anybody who's got a DUI or anybody who knows anybody who's got a DUI knows that you pay fines, you pay fees, you pay court costs, you pay to attend alcohol treatment classes or alcohol education classes. You pay your court costs. So uh, California does not need to raise taxes to pay for that. It's already being paid for by the people who are uh, committing the crimes. And those people should pay. But not everybody who drinks a beer. Because everybody who drinks a beer doesn't abuse alcohol. Everybody who drinks beer doesn't have car accidents. Everybody who drinks beer doesn't drive drunk. Everybody who drinks beer doesn't have a liver transplant. There are many, many people, I dare say the, the majority of people who drink, drink responsibly. And when I say drink responsibly, I don't mean it in that empty way that you hear in advertising. I mean most people uh, don't want to drive drunk, don't want to get arrested, don't want to get in trouble. I see it all around me all the time. I see more designated drivers than ever and what have you. Why should people who act responsibly be penalized like the people who are irresponsible? I mean, if you want to tax anybody, how about you charge higher fines for the people who are arrested, for the people who are convicted, for the people who spend time in prison? How about raising the premiums of people who have alcohol-related illnesses? But, but why would you raise the tax on everybody? It's outrageous. This is the Assemblyman Jim Beal Jr. again. He says, beer is the alcohol of choice for underage drinkers. Research tells us that kids who begin drinking before they are 15 are more prone to become alcoholics. They are also more susceptible to alcohol-related problems such as vehicle accidents and assaults later in life uh, than people who, are, uh, who wait until they are 21 or older to take their first drink. Let me tell you something. People who are 15 or under who are drinking... They're probably not paying for it now at, at the current price. They're probably getting it from their parents' refrigerator. And they're probably getting it from their parents' liquor cabinet or their parents' kegerator or whatever. And they love throwing kids in there anytime they want to pass a, a tax increase of some kind. This has nothing to do with children. Nothing. It has to do with the fact that California is broke and they want to balance the budget somehow. And they're trying to find a popular tax they can inflict on everybody. Don't be fooled. By the way, it says here that this proposal would increase the tax on a six-pack of beer sold in the state of California by $1.80 or $0.30 cents per can or bottle. A two-thirds majority of the legislature is required to get the measure before voters who must also approve it by a two-thirds majority. The bill's language has not been finished yet, according to the statement. If, pa if passed... Tax will be the first new levy on beer in California since the federal government hiked its uh, beer tax in 1991 by two cents a can. Jesus Christ. It's outrageous. It's outrageous. Then they go ahead and claim, uh, they, they, they quote all these statistics that may or may not have to do with beer. The Assemblyman claimed the tax should help fund money for emergency and trauma care. Yeah, right. It'll be balancing the budget. This money will never go to emergency or trauma care. Prevention and intervention programs. Anybody who's taken alcohol re-education class or an alcohol education class after you get a DUI, you all know how great those state programs are, right? Crime prevention. Uh huh. Mental health services and treatment. Victim assistance. School counseling. School counseling, again, complete waste of time. And programs to prevent underage drinking. Yeah, those programs we've got so far are doing a great job. 
And then they go ahead and quote, uh, well, the 2005 alcohol-related traffic crashes claimed 1,574 lives and injured 30,810 people in California. What does that have to do with beer and the price of beer? Huh? Then they go on to say, in 2004, alcohol played a role in 3,691 deaths, according to the California Department of Alcohol and Drug Programs. Again, what does this have to do with the cost of a can or a bottle of beer? Oh, and then here's here's a hot button. They throw in about half of all sexual assaults in America involve drinking by either the perpetrator or the victim, or both. According to a 2002 study funded by the National Institute on Alcohol Abuse and Alcoholism, well, once again, you haven't explained how taxing beer only is going to uh, to help that problem. And by the way, people are going to get drunk and have sex, <laughs> and then later claim to be raped. That's going to happen. Anyway, then they go on to pro uh, quote the uh, the uh, uh, the profits of the big beer companies. And uh, I do not see why the profits earned by the big beer companies has anything to do uh, with this tax, because the bottom line here is that uh, the beer company is going to be taxed, and they're going to pass it on to you. I mean, if uh, by the way, as a shareholder in various companies, I would hope the companies would not absorb the tax. I would hope they would pass it on to the consumer. So I don't see how how, how much money the beer company is making is relevant either. This is stupid, stupid, stupid. A two dollar, actually, uh, almost two dollars, like thirty cents a can or a bottle, a dollar eighty per six pack tax on beer sold in California. Th this is stupid, right? Tom Likas. Like 1-800-5800-TOM. Likas. 1-800-5800-866. You're the biggest Latino I know, bro. <laughs> you, you like soccer, you would be a complete Latino. <laughs> but that's not a topic. <laughs> it's the Tom Likas Show. It's the Tom Likas Show. At one eight hundred five eight hundred Tom, an assemblyman who I happen to think is a complete moron named Jim Field Jr., California State Assembly, wants to add a dollar eighty a six pack tax on cans and bottles of beer. He claims it'll fund things like you know head trauma, alcohol education, but. We all know California is bankrupt and uh, that this money will never, ever go where he says it's going to go. It's just another way of getting money into the till. It's outrageous. And if you love beer, this is the time to get to know who your state assemblyman is in California. I'll tell you right now. Uh, you know, we don't talk about politics on this show a lot, but I, one thing I know about our audience, I know most of you love beer. This is insane. One eight hundred five eight hundred Tom. That's our telephone number. This is Chris in Portland, Oregon, home of the other white meat on the Tom Likas show. Hello. Hey Tom. I actually uh, work for a wholesaler here in uh, Portland, and uh, last year we had a similar type tax, alcohol tax measure that just failed miserably in Oregon. So well, it's, it's, hopefully, and I would assume this is the case. Hopefully the uh, the the brewers uh, did their job and lobbied against it successfully. Yeah, I mean, the probably. Big three, if you look at the big three, they've you know billions of dollars of which they all have lobbying wings. Some of these other breweries are owned by major multinational beverage companies that include all beer, wine, and liquor. They've got billions and billions of dollars with lots of lawyers. And then the, the craft brewers are they even though they're technically in competition, they all kind of work together because it's a real small scene. So they work together on issues like that as well. And they'll definitely play the local economy card on that end as well. I mean, it, especially where you guys have to have two-thirds in your legislature as well as two-thirds of the voters, there's no way. It's probably not even going to get out of committee. Well, I hope it doesn't. I think this assemblyman is a moron. And uh, this is all such obvious lies. Every word he says is a lie here in my view. 
Oh, and I hope people will see through that. And just your check off the box of the alcohol evils. Yeah. Oh, God, I'm so tired. I am so tired of these people. Uh, Especially right now with the economy, kind of everybody feeling really bad about the economy, uh, destroying a very profitable sector of the economy that already produces a good amount of taxes. Yeah, by the way, in a recession, people need people need beer more than ever. Exactly. Outrageous. I say they should tax hotel rooms in Sacramento. So that when these morons come to town to uh, make stupid laws, uh, they have to pay a higher price for a room. Because we all know what trouble politicians get into on the road. And we could use this to fund, uh, you know, anti-prostitution ordinances, uh, prostitution education. Maybe maybe add an alcohol tax for uh, legislators only. I like that. that. That's a good one. One eight hundred five eight hundred. Tom is her telephone number. Marie on the Tom Likas show. Hello. Hey Tom, how are you? Doing okay. Well, my Irish blood is boiling. <laughs> I cannot believe that they would even consider something like that. I mean, I guess I can because, like you were saying earlier, they should maybe uh, make prostitution legal and make a big fat tax on that because then we'd probably uh, take care of our deficit right there with all of our congressmen, but. Beer? I live in Hollywood, so it's already $12 a beer if you go out. So they need to look at the big picture if they do this. It's going to hit so hard. People aren't even going to want to go out and enjoy themselves, and it's going to be just a mess. And how is this uh, tax going to affect uh, beer at a ball game? If it's 30 cents a can or bottle, are they going to add 30 cents like at the Dodger game or the Laker game? Well, I'm sure it will add a, at least a dollar more, you know, because everyone kind of has to get their piece of the pie. Well, plus all the sports teams tend to round off to the nearest five dollars. Right. <laughs> Why don't they tax like McDonald's French fries or something? Oh well, they would never do that. <laughs> I mean, uh, it's just outrageous. I know. I could not agree with you more. Thank you, Marie. Thank you. Appreciate the call. 1-800-5800-TOM. This is going to be a very unpopular idea, I can tell already. Lewis on the Tom Likas show. Hello. Hello, Tom? Yes. Hey, Tom. Um, I just want to comment. Uh, the guy, Chris, a couple of callers ago, he hit it perfectly on the head. The state assembly needs a two-thirds majority vote to pass any new tax. Um, the Congress. I, 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 by the way, how long have you lived in California? For me? My yeah. whole life. Yeah. Now, how many taxes do you see around you? How many taxes? Yeah, how uh, many? On everything. Right. So getting a two-thirds majority of the California Assembly uh, for a tax increase is not hard to do. But you have to understand that since this whole deficit problem we've had in, in California, the state representatives, the Republican state representatives, have signed a, a pact that they will not vote for any new taxes until the um, deficit in California is taken care of. They're trying to hold the liberals responsible for all of the overspending and the redistribution of wealth and, and the socialism. Well, first practice. of all, Lewis, uh, after seeing what's happened in the federal government the last seven years, uh, this this is just a bunch of baloney uh, that uh, conservatives don't want to spend money and liberals do. Politicians spend money. It oh, no, politicians all spend money, and they're and all... And conservatives are just as bad as anybody else. The, 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 I, I really get upset when people try to say that liberals spend money and conservatives save it. Uh, well, they, no, they spend money on different things. Right and, right, and they aren't necessarily better things. They're just different things. Exactly, exactly. But in, in this case, what I'm saying is that the, the, the conservatives, they, are, they have all signed an agreement not to pass any new taxes. So right now, as long as we still have the deficit, none of these new taxes dreamt up by any of these socialist hacks in, in Sacramento are going anywhere. They're just not. Well, we'll see. Well, they haven't. Not yet. Uh, well, hey, we guess we'll let time tell. We'll, 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 see, yeah, well, yeah, we'll see how long they, uh, i, I got to tell you, we'll see how long that uh, the state will be able to stand having uh, not just a budget deficit. The, the state is bankrupt, for Christ's sake. 1-800-5-800-TOM. It's Brent on the Tom Likas Show. Hello. Dad, Son, how are you? Great. 
long time, first time caller. Thank you. And Dad, I just want to say I listen to your advice every step of the way, and I totally agree with you. This issue is bogus. It's outrageous. And, dude, I drink all the time. As a matter of fact, I'm drinking right now. Hey. Cheap stuff. Cheap stuff. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Um, I moved back home from uh, Phoenix, Arizona about three and a half weeks ago. I used to live out here before. Arizona is a right-wing, flashing red, conservative state where tobacco and alcohol are so expensive I mean, I I smoke too, and I move out here, and it's a breath of fresh air. Well, wait a minute, you just you you just proved yourself wrong there because number one, these taxes on tobacco and alcohol they're generally the creation of Democrats, as as the one uh, being proposed in California to, to tax beer. Really? Of course. Well, and and by the way, the governor in Arizona is a Democrat and a man, uh, and frequently uh, the mayor of Phoenix is a Democrat. So, well, they're they're both wrong then. I mean, I, I think bottom line is why should we get stiffed as consumers when, like you said earlier, the manufacturers aren't going to feel the pinch on this. You know, it's it's still going to be distributed out. It's going to go to stores. It's going to go to bars. Like the girl said before, it's 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 going to go to ball games. It's going to go to sporting events, concerts, and we are all going to feel the pinch on this. And I think. We're getting cheated. We're getting robbed. I mean, exactly. Tax French fries at McDonald's. What about all the fatties out there? You know, I mean, it, it's up to us to be responsible. You know, and I, like you said, I don't think a dime of this is is going to go to hospitals, to paramedics, to the police force, to the school systems. It's going to go in somebody's pocket. Or two words right here, pork barrel. By the way, remember, uh, yeah, you may have heard that when they started the lottery here in the uh, state of California, they said the money was going to education. Oh, yeah. Let me ask you a question. Last time you went to the DMV, what was the educational level of the average employee there? Um, Probably fourth grade at best. Right. right. But uh, the lottery was going to educate everybody, and it was going to be the next best thing. Well, maybe they're getting around to it, Tom, right? <laughs> <laughs> Um, hey, how about th how about this suggestion? Gas. Gas is almost at four dollars a gallon right now. Why not tax it? We're all going to pay for it anyway. Why why doesn't that tax go to gas instead of um, alcohol? Well, first of all, uh, uh, gasoline is already taxed uh, in a in a big way. Uh, if you ever look closely at your gas pump, it, it breaks out uh, how much is paid in federal and state and county and city taxes. Okay. That's a large amount right there. Oh, wow. Wow, I didn't even think about that. Now, uh, there was a financial writer years ago named Andrew Tobias. Oh, yeah. Who had uh, an idea, and it was a good one. Uh, let's get rid of uh, auto insurance premiums as we know them. Yes. And let's charge uh, for insurance by the gallon of gasoline. Yes, that is a good idea. So the people who drive the most pay the most for insurance. Right. The people who drive less pay less for insurance. Yeah. And, of course, that idea went nowhere. Right, because auto insurance is higher in the more populated cities, like in Los Angeles. You know, and if you live, like, in Billings, Montana, you know, you're going to pay less, obviously. No, no, but he, he was uh, talking about, like, in individual states, just charge people, you know, for their car insurance. Yeah. I mean, insurance is a state thing, you know. You drive five miles a week, you're going to pay a lot less than this, instead of driving 50 miles a day. That's right. Okay. I, all right. How about this? What if you smoke weed, which most of us do? Why doesn't this tax go over their legalized pot, right, and leave alcohol alone? You know why. You know why. I know why. Marijuana is illegal to give the government more authority to pull you over yeah. and to go through your glove compartment and your trunk looking for other stuff. Unrightfully so, right. But, but the... the, the Believe me, don't kid yourself. Marijuana laws do not exist to protect anybody from marijuana. No. Marijuana laws exist to give the police force, the representative of your government, more opportunities to go into your car and search your stuff. I know, Tom, and it's just all wishful thinking, and it's not a perfect world. Yes, yes, I know. Lyndon on the Tom Likas show, hello. Hey, Tom, how are you doing, my brother? Great. I call you brother because, frankly, you're just not old enough to be my dad. I see. I'm out of your age demographic, but I'm with you in spirit. Hey, Tom, I own uh, uh, several uh, beer bars in uh, Southern California, so 
my business is selling beer. Um, and I can uh, verify for you that, you know, in a time of uh, economic downturn, our sales actually go up because especially in my type of places, which are, you know, your local watering holes, uh, uh, blue-collar type employees, construction workers, that sort of thing. And I'll tell you what, you know, this, like any other, you know, quote-unquote syntax, is going to hurt the people that can least likely afford it. And like you said, the money is not going to go where they said it would, and they, it, it never does. Well, because uh, what are we paying insurance premiums for then? I'll tell you what, you want to raise the beer tax, eliminate the insurance premiums. Give me free health insurance. Uh, give me free alcohol education. If I get a, a pop for DUI, no court costs, uh, no uh, uh, fines, because it's already been paid for by the beer tax. <laughs> well, that that's what they should do. You know, raise raise the fines of people that get 502s that are out there stupid, you know, uh, 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 being drunk and, you know, hitting people and killing people. You know, and th that's where it should go. And I'm, I, I tell you, you know, frankly, between this and the uh, minimum wage increases that we've had in uh, California over the last two years, it went up 50 cents uh, first of this year in 75 uh, uh, in 07. And, uh, you know, it's just, just killing me. Uh, uh, you know, especially in the service industry where your employees are making tips. So they're making far more than the minimum wage already just from tips. But California is one of only like seven states that do not let you take that into consideration, uh, uh, you know, instead of letting you pay less than minimum wage, you know, because the employees are getting it. And, uh, you know, this is all with – well, that, I think that was uh, thanks to Arnold. But most of these taxes are Democrats, and that's why I usually vote Republican. But even then you get George Bush, you know, promising you no new taxes. But it's, it's really uh, got me more mad than uh, most people, I think, Tom. Yeah, well, uh, I, I can understand why you would be mad, Lyndon, and um, anything you do uh, to fight it, I support you. Well, we will be there, and I'll even uh, 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 send you an email on your website, because if you know this does get down to a ballot issue, uh, we will definitely have a campaign going against it, and maybe we can get some of your support, too. Thank you so much, Lyndon. I appreciate the call. Tom, Tom, Tom. Like this. 1-800-5800-TOM. Tom. 1-800-5800-866. Back in high school, you've been having a girlfriend. First day I heard you, dump the bitch the next day. I love that. It's the Tom Likas Show. It's the Tom Likas Show. From Los Angeles at one 800 800 tom Thank you for tuning in. Thanks for being part of our program. We appreciate it. Some moron, a California State Assemblyman named Jim Beal Jr., has proposed legislation that would increase the excise tax on beer by an amount of uh, $1.80 a six-pack. Claims the money will go to. Oh, yes, give the list. To increase health and law enforcement services that must cope with the havoc caused by drinking, domestic violence, and fatality, and illnesses, all fueled by the alcohol industry. Jesus Christ. 1 800 5 800 Tom. Anybody think this is a good idea? Anybody? Let's say hello to Todd on the Tom Liger Show. Hello. Hello, Dad. Hello, son. This is just like the cigarette tax they did about 10 years ago where it was supposed to go to uh, anti-teen smoking and fund health care for smokers and stuff like that. And where did all that money go? Right in the pockets of all the politicians. Well, I mean, the, the state of California is broke. Exactly. So now you're going to see a lot of bright ideas like this that are supposedly going to help us. But in reality, they're going to help balance the state's budget. Exactly. And it, the problem is, is that it's, it's like, you know, it's like you said before, even though it will never happen within our lifetime, if they legalize things, ju just marijuana nationwide, even in the state of California, you legalize marijuana, it would pay for the deficit in less than six weeks. Right simple as that and and the problem is is that I, i'm calling from las vegas i stream your show every day from my office but i will tell you this if one state starts taxing at a dollar eighty a six pack and then another state and then another state and then the next thing you know 
it starts happening all over across the United States. And it's, it's like wildfire. So I am, you know, I go to California to visit my family out there all the time. I am completely against this for moral and, and obvious reasons because all it's doing is it's taking the average working guy that's making just barely minimum wage and goes to get a six-pack Friday night. Now he's going to have to, you know, if this lobby or this uh, tax becomes enacted, the next thing you know is that he's going to have to pay an extra dollar thirty for his six-pack of beer on Friday night, and that's ridiculous. Right, and you will notice, and not that I want to give anybody ideas, but uh, expensive bottles of wine bought by people who could better afford taxes, uh, they're not touched. No. No. And maybe what they need to do is they need to add a, uh, I, I mean, I am a wine drinker too, but mostly a beer drinker, but maybe they need to add a dollar ten tax per bottle of wine for all the expensive wine drinkers. And I know that would suck for you, Tom, because I know you're a, a very big wine drinker. But if you can afford the wine, why but, not? But the point is, but here's why. I'm going to tell you why. Because I already have health insurance. If I get sick because I drink too much, my health insurance will cover me. On top of that, if I have a car accident, my car insurance is there for that purpose. And, by the way, if my car insurance doesn't cover me because I'm drunk when I'm driving, uh, then I have to pay for myself. That's my problem. Exactly. But if a drunk driver hits me, my insurance company's going to pay for it. So why should the state of California get a bonus for that? I agree 100% with you, Deb. It's, it's as simple as that. It's, it's, the state of California is in such a huge deficit that they've got to come up with, you know, creative ways to try and pay off, you know, the budget deficit. Basically, you know, with somebody like the governor in there for the state of California, um, it's been kind of downhill. And, I mean, the whole country's been going downhill for the last eight years. And, you know, since Clinton was out of office and we've had, you know, the Texas cowboy oil baron in there, it's just gotten worse and worse. No doubt about it. Thank you for the call. 1-800-5800-TOM is our telephone number. Oh, here we go. Took uh, 45 minutes to find somebody like this. Tristan on the Tom Likas show. Hello. Hey, Tom. Long time, first time. Thank you. Um, you know, I'm all for this because, you know, I'm more, I'm not as concerned as where the money is going to go. But I'm more concerned about trying to stop people from drinking alcohol because, like the statistics you quoted, I, I do think that they do cause uh, – I think those statistics are real. I have a friend that died from alcohol, and that, that was a very personal experience for me. How and, would tax have prevented that from happening? Well, you know, if somebody can't afford to buy alcohol, they're not going to be buying it. And uh, So what you're yeah, saying I, is that only middle class and rich people should be able to get drunk – lose their lives, risk the lives of others. Well, <laughs> Darwinism, social Darwinism, <laughs> let the uh, let the rich and powerful prevail. But uh, And you're in favor of that. Abs uh, yeah, I mean, you, you know, like my friend, he, he was at a party, got drunk, passed out, fell over, threw up in his mouth and choked on it and died. At that party, maybe if the person throwing the party can afford the alcohol, maybe maybe my friend would be here today. I doubt that. Your friend would find some other way to get uh, inebriated. Anybody I know who's a heavy drinker or a problem drinker, they don't have little problems like somebody uh, uh, can't afford alcohol or somebody doesn't have a beer in the fridge. Stop them from getting drunk. Yeah, well, I have a friend who's a police officer in Anaheim, and he's told me countless uh, stories of, of um, spousal-related uh, issues because of alcohol. But the, again, uh, there's no guarantee that making alcohol cost more will stop people from drinking. And by the way, you're only talking about a tax on beer. How many people will stop drinking beer and start drinking vodka? So so this tax only applies to beer. Correct. Beer. Well, hey, if, if, it, if it you know saves a few lives, if it's... No, but, uh, it's I see no evidence, none that a tax on beer would save people's lives. None. Well, like, Where's like the, the previous, evidence? Well, the previous caller, he's like, well, look at the, like, what about the guy who's barely making minimum wage, and now he's got to go and spend more money on alcohol? Why is he buying alcohol in the first place? He can't afford it. That's none of our business. But if he can't afford it... That's none of our business. 
and that'll stop him from drinking. No, it won't. My life in a car I've, I've, got, I've got four words for you. Vodka of the gods. You know, here in Southern California, anybody who can't afford alcohol goes to Trader Joe and gets the low-end vodka of the gods or tequila of the gods. Drinkers will drink. Alcoholics will find a way to get drunk. Well, this is this is so naive. The idea that if you make a can of beer cost thirty cents more, it's going to stop alcoholics from drinking. Well, it's like okay. What about what about cigarettes? Uh, I'm in college right now, and we're learning that cigarettes are the number one cause of death, um, a preventable death. That is. Not is that because there aren't enough taxes on them already? Oh, I think there should be more so people. But the point is, they, they tell us every time they raise tax on cigarettes that it's going to stop people from smoking, and they're wrong. Not no no because back in the 40s and 50s, I, I don't remember the exact statistic, but about half of all people adults were smoking. Now it's down to like 20 percent. 20 percent in California. If you think it's 20 percent, go to Kansas City for for a weekend, or Chicago, or New York, or Boston, or Philadelphia. You're just plain wrong. Well, <laughs> you know, I love your show. I guess uh, we'll agree to disagree. No, no, but you're wrong factually. I don't. This I don't is not a matter of opinion. We're not agreeing to disagree. You are factually in error. Twenty. It, that way more than twenty percent of the population is smoking cigarettes. Well, you're assuming that that somebody that can't afford beer is going to go get another drink. What if What if he doesn't like that other drink? What if he's not an alcoholic? You know, it doesn't necessarily. Oh, you're 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 a loon. I, I don't know anybody who only likes beer. I don't know anybody who only likes beer. Most people I know drink beer as an aperitif before they drink booze. You know, I'm tired of these guys that like the uh, Angel Stadium and stuff like that. You know, they sit next to me, get the big old beer. They're acting absolutely insane. Drunk well, guess what? Guy. You don't have to go to the game. That's not a public place. Uh, that's that's a private business. You do not have to attend a baseball game. And by the way, you don't have a right to attend a baseball game. True, true, but I can enjoy myself, and if these clowns... You're not required. Again, I, this is a very dangerous area we've gotten into, where we get into private businesses, and we tell... We, now we, we now customers of the private businesses want laws made uh, to protect themselves from other people doing things they don't like. Yeah. Well, I don't smoke cigarettes, and I do like to go to bars, but you know what? Uh, the idea of having no smoking in bars, though I've never smoked a cigarette in my life, okay? Mm -hmm. uh, the idea of telling people they can't smoke in bars is ludicrous. And I don't like cigarette smoke any more than you do. But I also know that a bar is a place where people go to engage in unhealthy activities. That's what it is. It is, it is not, this is not 24 hour fitness. It's a bar. Hey, I like to go bowling and, uh, Ever since uh, the, uh, you know, you can't smoke in the, in the bowling alleys and whatnot. Hey, man, I love bowling. Yeah, how's that business doing? By, how's there? that business doing, by the way, the bowling business? How's that doing? Oh, I just go for fun. I don't uh, How I is the business? Yeah, yeah, well, it's not doing that great. And by the way, the bar and restaurant business took a big hit, too, after smoking was banned. Good. Thank goodness. Oh, you think that's good? But why is yeah, that any of your beautiful. business? Get you're rid of bar. Wait, you get rid of bars and restaurants? No, restaurants. Yeah, I just bars. said. Get rid of bars. So, yeah. so now you I, want to impose your I, opinion. So because you don't drink, you want to impose your opinion on everybody else. Isn't that what your radio show is? You try to impose your opinion on us and let, let us make No, I don't. Even, no, no. I don't impose my opinion on you. Here's why. I, I just express an opinion. I don't make laws making my opinion the law of the land, and you have to live with it. It's true. Yeah, that's true. Do you know the difference between making a law and expressing an opinion? Yes. yes no, I clearly do. you don't. Because you think my show is the same as making a law. No, it's not It's not making a law. I mean, if this, if this assemblyman wants to express an opinion that he thinks drinking is killing people, then he can express that opinion. But he doesn't have to make a law to make it like acceptable to people like you. Well, one of the great things about this country is that we can vote on laws and the and the. And know, the believe means, uh, me, people like me, and there's more people like me than like you. And let me tell you something, rule, pal. Right? Well, no, actually, the majority doesn't rule. We have a representative form of government, but I guarantee you, there's not going to be a two dollar or a dollar eighty a six pack beer tax in California, because I know that the companies that make beer, they'll never let it stand. And good for them. It's the Tom Likas Show.